the remesh approach to sculpting centers around the idea of frequently resetting your sculpture by maintaining the shape, but giving it all new superior topology to continue sculpting. So let's take our sphere and turn it into an octopus-like creature. Right out of the gate, this isn't a lot of geometry to work with. So in the remesh options, we have the remesh button, but I'm gonna take that voxel size down to 0.05 and we can hit either the remesh button or hit control R in the viewport. Now you'll see that our topology changed even though it's still got some faceting from the previous shape, the previous low res shape. And so if I go to our mesh filter and choose smooth and click and drag a few times, we will smooth out our sphere and we can see the new topology by turning on our wireframe. So several grid patterns have been projected onto our sphere in an all quad format, meaning all of our faces are quads. And quadded geometry is far superior to triangulated topology, which is one of the cons of dynamic topology. But with remesh and multi-res being quad based, it's a much smoother sculpting experience, at least for the surface quality. And so the way remesh works, I've always thought of it as imagine your sphere is surrounded by like 10 Spider-Men and they all, you know, shoot their webs at the same time. And those webs wrap around your shape and kind of stitch together. And the result is this type of mesh where you have several grid patterns, but they're stitched at various angles. And uh, the main benefit, again, is that this is much better for uh, the sculpting experience. Also, it's completely uniform across the entire surface. So let's turn off our wireframe again. And if we wanna pull out some tentacles, let's turn on X symmetry and use the snake hook. We do still have the problem of it being a static mesh. So as I pull out a tentacle, the geometry will start to skew and stretch to the point of being unusable. However, I can hit Control R and that will remesh or reset the sculpture, maintaining the shape, but giving me new geometry that I can sculpt with. And so in this way, we have that free form benefit that comes from dynamic topology. I'll just do the same thing for a few other tentacles. Control R to remesh. And if I wanna make this even smoother, we can remesh at a lower value like 0.02, Control R. And keep in mind, each time you lower this voxel size, it is gonna take a little bit longer to calculate but it also keeps the pre-existing shape, which if it's a low resolution shape, we will see that faceting maintained. So a quick way to get rid of that is going to the mesh filter, choose our smooth option, click and drag several times until it's all completely smooth. And so now we've got the beginnings of our octopus shape. And as a bit of a side note, there's no reason why we can't enable dynamic topology and use that to pull out these tentacle shapes before remeshing. So if I wanna pull out a couple antenna shapes, you know, we can do that with dynamic topology. And then we have to turn off dynamic topology before we can control our remesh. So they can be used in conjunction. But let's say we've got a shape that we're happy with. We're ready to start adding some details. Details is where remesh becomes a bit of a challenge. So let's say we wanna start with the mouth. I'm gonna hit Shift C for my crease brush and let's draw out this kind of frowny face. Increase the size of the lower lip. Give him kind of a pouty look. You'll notice that we're quickly reaching the limit of the geometry that's available. It's stretching and skewing very noticeably. Well, we can hit Control R to remesh and that will give us new topology, but it will also butcher those details that we just sculpted. So if we undo that, and then let's say we need more topology to account for it, let's lower the voxel size to 0 0.01, Control R to remesh once again, and we're going to have enough uh, topology, but we do have to re-sculpt that detail. So I really want this mouth to be nice and crisp, Maybe have a little bit of uh, inflation to overlay one lip on top of the other, smooth out the shape. Okay, that's pretty good for uh, the shape of a mouth. But remember, I had to sculpt that twice due to remesh. Let's say we wanna add even finer details like on the tentacle, some little suction cup like things. So let's inflate first, control to push down. Let's increase the strength all the way. 
And once again, we will quickly run into the limits of the geometry that's there. So I can hit Control R to remesh, but I will lose that detail. Control R and we have a little bit more geometry in the suction cup, but that nice crisp detail I put in the mouth is gone. Or I shouldn't say it's gone, it's just not as perfect as I had it. And so one of my biggest cons when it comes to the remesh approach is that it feels much more non-committal than multi-res or dynamic topology. With both of those, I can create a detail and keep the detail long-term, whereas remesh tends to be a bit more destructive. Now on the positive side, this limitation does keep the sculpting process very free and flowing when you don't have to commit to details. But one of the ways to compensate for this is by using multiple objects in your sculpture. So let's say we wanted to add some eyes. I'll jump to object mode, shift A and add a UV sphere. And I'm going to uh, scale this down, position it on one side of the face like this. And then I can also um, duplicate it, but first let's control A and apply the scale, then shift D and move in the X axis to the other side of the face. And then in my options, I'm going to enable linked. This means if I edit one object, it will edit the other because it's a linked duplicate. And this works with remesh by jumping into sculpt mode and control R to remesh, it will happen to both. Now the remesh settings are on a per object basis. So you can see that our voxel size is back to the default of uh, 0.1. Let's go down to 0.01, control R, and also use the mesh filter. Make sure it's set to smooth. Control R one more time. There we go, now we have a, a cleaner shape. And this way I have isolated remesh detail on just the eyes. So I can add kind of a, a lid on top. I don't think I want X symmetry enabled. Let's turn that off. But yeah, I can sculpt with the clay strips an eyelid, give it a nice tight edge. and then sculpt an iris, maybe use the mask brush, switch to inflate and kind of push it inward, control R. And this brings up a point, whenever you mask, you cannot only remesh certain areas, you remesh the entire object. And if we undo that, you can enable preserve paint mask. So when I remesh, it will do its best to preserve the mask, but regardless, the whole mesh is updated. So that is something to keep in mind. If you could isolate just certain parts to be remeshed, that would be pretty cool, but the way it is now, you cannot. So in this way, you know, we have two separate objects, an object for both eyes and then also for the body. And this is how we can maintain the details we've sculpted in the body, but also apply new details to the eyes. And along those lines, you can also go back to object mode and kind of melt objects together very easily with the remesh modifier. So if we wanted to add just a, I don't know, some sort of a, a wing or something and control J to merge them into one object, jump back to sculpt mode, control R, and that will melt the objects together, so to speak, kind of weld them. And so this is an easy way that you can build up shapes quickly by using primitives and just merging them and remeshing them. And so uh, in my experience, the remesh workflow has the biggest learning curve because it has some benefits of the multi-resolution approach and some benefits of dynamic topology. But to get the most out of remeshing, you have to really know the best way to work with it. But uh, there are a few settings to be aware of. If we look under remesh, you've seen voxel size. Now adaptivity, if we read the description, it reduces the final face count by simplifying geometry where detail is not needed, generating triangles. A value greater than zero disables the fixed pulse. So this tries to, instead of a global uniformity in the wireframe, it tries to put more topology in the areas that need it. However, by disabling the poles, if we turn on wireframe and give this a shot, let's turn down the remesh to like 0.05 and control R. So that's the default with adaptivity at, uh, let's see, at zero. But if we go to like 0.05, control R, 
you can see that it tries to put more uh, geometry where it's needed, like in the crease. But this, in my opinion, defeats a lot of the purpose of remesh because the topology is just like dynamic topology at that point. And the decimate modifier, I think, does a much better job. So I don't really ever use the adaptivity. The pull fixing is very important. Again, at zero, let's, that's a, just a much cleaner type of mesh. And uh, you can also enable smooth normals, but that's only applied whenever you do remesh. So now you can see that it's uh, nice and smooth. And after that, we've got a preserve volume, which should probably be on by default. I don't know why you would not want to preserve the volume of the shape. Preserve paint mask you've seen and um, remesh. So the only other thing to be aware of is under your object data, there is a remesh dropdown. Okay, so this repeats the same settings from up here. However, we have another option for quad remesh or which is called quadriflow remesh. Now, I really just wanna mention this because personally I find that this is not extremely usable as it is right now, but it's got a ways until it's uh, completely useful. But this tries to mimic like Z remesher from ZBrush. And so if we um, just use the operator as its defaults, there are a lot of options there and click OK. We're going to have to wait for the mesh to be built. And at only 4,000 polygons, we don't get a great result, but what it's trying to do is create a quadded topology without those poles, right? Remember the uh, Spider-Man example where the webs stitch together, they create that kind of funky geometry. This is trying to get rid of that by making it follow the curvature and flow of the mesh, almost as if a human were trying to retopologize this. But as you can see, there's a, a little bit left to be desired before it's completely usable. I recommend sticking with voxel because that's um, much more developed and uh, user-friendly. And that's gonna be the overview for the remesh approach to sculpting. I highly encourage you to practice dynamic topology and remesh and even try and combine them together to find what approach works best for you. And for the last chapter of this course, we're going to apply what we've learned to actually sculpt a uh, proper creature.